the Philippine market is currently experiencing a high level to demand, and especially in the light of the recent policy award to the new 11.6 hundred megawatt renewable capacity scheduled for the auction in the June. This development serves to the underscore the sway vote and the expansion of the Philippines market and its increasing status as a key player in the renewable energy sector based in the Southeast Asia. This is my pleasure and honor to introduce our next keynote speaker for today is Dr. Rowena. She is the Undersecretary of the Philippines Department of the Energy and the expert in the field of the energy policies and planning. In her speech, Dr. Wadena will be discussed the opportunities that be equalization present for the Philippines renewable energy sector and the challenges that need to be overcome to achieve the successful transition. She will highlight in the policies that DOEs promote the growth of the renewable energy in the country. So I would like to welcome the Dr. Wadena to on the stage. My fellow speakers and panelists, participants from the yes, energy sir. sector, representatives from the government and private agencies across the ASEAN region, pleasant day to all of you. I would like to thank the Leader Associates for inviting me to speak in today's web webinar with the theme Energy Transition Readiness in ASEAN and present the Philippines Renewable Energy Market Liberalization, Opportunities and Challenges. First, let's talk about the power statistics in the Philippines. Coal contributes 44% of the installed capacity and 58% gross power generation in the Philippines. This is followed by renewable energy or RE with 29% of installed capacity and 22% of total gross power generation as of 2021. Among the REs, hydro provided the biggest share at 13% and geothermal at 10% for the installed capacity and gross generation. Based on recent studies by the World Bank and other development partners, the Philippines has a huge RE resource potential, but there is much work to be done. The Philippine Energy Plan 2020 to 2040 has a target of 35% RE share in the power generation mix by 2030 and 50% by 2040. To realize these goals, we are institutionalizing a comprehensive approach to address the challenges and gaps that prevent or delay wider application of RE and RE technologies in a sustainable manner and outline the action plan necessary to facilitate and encourage greater private sector investments in RE development. In the next 17 years, we plan to have 5% energy savings on oil products and electricity, 10% electric vehicle penetration rate in road transport, the adoption of advanced and interoperable ICT in, in the energy chain, and resilient and climate-proof energy infrastructure. Currently, the total power demand in the country is about 26,000 megawatts. To meet this electricity demand and reach our targets, we need to build 52,826 megawatts of renewable energy on top of existing and committed power plants in the country. This will consist of 27,000 megawatt solar, 16,600 16, megawatts wind, 6,150 megawatts hydro, 2,500 megawatts geothermal, and 364 megawatts of biomass. Last year, the Department of Energy awarded a total of 1,002 projects with RE contracts with total potential capacity of 80,339 megawatts. We also need to invest in research and development and demonstration to determine the viability of adapting certain RE systems, technologies, or processes in the Philippine setting, particularly in areas where there is zero or limited local experience. We need to get the output of renewable energy generators all the way to the consumers. We can do this by building a smart green transmission system that connects the RE sources to the main grid and allow unimpeded, unconstrained, and reliable power. Aside from traditional RE sources, 
we are continuously looking for new and emerging technologies such as ocean and tidal technology, offshore wind, and waste to energy technologies. The utilization of alternative fuels are also being studied such as hydrogen and ammonia, among others. We consider nuclear to be part of the energy mix from 2032 onwards and hope that the private sector will collaborate with us in pursuing this initiative. We see that these new generation investments will help us meet our energy supply requirements and decarbonization targets as well. The Department of Energy also pushed for 100% foreign ownership in RE project exploration, development and utilization of solar, wind, hydropower and ocean energy to facilitate and encourage greater private sector investments in the Philippines renewable energy development. Competitive RE zones or CRES were launched to assist in identifying the most economically advantageous areas so that transmission planning and expansion can be accelerated and address development obstacles to renewable energy, which will help reduce the risk for private sector renewable energy investment. To date, we have identified 25 competitive renewable energy zones for 58,110 megawatts potential solar power and 93,987 megawatts potential wind power across the Philippines. We've also developed several RE policy mechanisms for implementation in the coming years to achieve our RE targets. Following the Philippine Offshore Wind Roadmap, we will issue a circular defining the procedures and requirements for awarding offshore wind service contracts. And last week, the president signed an executive order to strengthen and rationalize the regulatory framework for the immediate development of offshore wind in the country. Today, the department has awarded 63 offshore wind energy service contracts with a potential capacity of 45,774 megawatts. This is 160% of our current generation capacity. While the numbers look good, the process of bringing wind developers from service contract award to generating the first kilowatt hour is a long one. We still have to work out possessory rights, environmental compliance, avoiding marine protected areas, ceilings, and so on. We have launched an investment promotion mechanism called the Open and Competitive Selection Process, or OXP4, which we were in, we will offer potential areas for RE development or predetermined areas to private investors. These predetermined areas have sufficient technical data for geothermal, hydropower, and wind energy. To date, the DOE has approved 19 predetermined areas to be offered in the auction this year. A circular providing the list of these PDAs, including the guidelines for the conduct of the open and competitive selection process and the approval of winning entities are targeted in the coming months. Another DOE mechanism for renewable energy is the Green Energy Auction Program, or JAYA, which intends to provide an additional market for RE through competitive electronic bidding of RE capacities. Compared to the first green energy auction for 2000 megawatts last year, we are more aggressive this year, and we're looking for renewable energy developers who have the ready capacity by next year to deliver 3,600 megawatts. And for 2025 and 2026, we need capacity commitments of 3,600 megawatts and 4,400 megawatts respectively, or a total of 11,600 megawatts. On the right side, you will see the timeline of activities, starting with the notice of auction, the followed by issuance of terms of reference, the gear prices are coming out tomorrow, and the registration period, among others. The green energy auction will be conducted in June 2023, just a few more months. I will show the breakdown of uh, RE technology and grid in the following slides. For J2, we excluded Hydro Runoff River to make way for the Energy Regulatory Commission's FIT2 and FIT3 for Hydro Runoff River. The proposed installation targets under J2 were determined based on first, capacity needed by the three grids 
to ensure sufficient supply. Second, the RE capacity levels to meet the target of 35% RE share in the power generation mix by 2030 and 50% by 2040. And third, the volume of RE certificates necessary to comply with the mandates under the Renewable Portfolio Standards. We will include in the terms of reference the list of areas and corresponding capacity of transmission that is already available. This will be provided by the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines. This way, we are guaranteed that the generated renewable energy can be transmitted at the projected timelines of 2024 to 2026. A series of discussion and meeting was also done to discuss how transmission development can be accelerated to match the pace of generation development. We will have a third auction of for green energy this year. This is a separate auction intended for geothermal and impounding hydro. The auction will be conducted in the fourth quarter of this year. In preparation for this, we are collaborating with development partners for technical assistance, specifically in developing auction guidelines and policy on settlement and payment through the wholesale electricity spot market. We also have other mandatory RE policy mechanisms, including the Renewable Portfolio Standards on grid and off grid that requires all load serving entities to source or produce a specified portion of their supply from eligible renewable energy facilities. The RPS off grid requires a minimum sourcing of a total annual generation by power generators in the missionary areas from available renewable energy resources in the area concerned based on optimal supply mix. The wholesale electricity spot market commercial operation in Mindanao officially started last January 26 of this year. The commercial operation of West and Mindanao is expected to improve the reliability of electric power supply, not only in the Mindanao grid, but also in the zone and Visayas grids. It will also help facilitate the implementation of other government policy mechanisms currently available only to the zone and Visayas, including, but not limited, the retail competition and open access, green energy option program, and RE market. And finally, the implementation of the reserve market. Having the reserve market in place will provide the optimal solution for all available capacities when scheduling reserve and energy capacities through call optimization while adhering to grid reliability requirements. We expect the reserve market to be fully operationalized this year. The liberalization of power industry in the Philippines in 2021 has led us to where we are today, a market-driven power sector where competition is possible. In closing, I would like to thank the Leaders Associates again for organizing this webinar. This serves as an avenue for discussing energy challenges and opportunities that allow innovative ideas to propel renewable energy development. On behalf of the Philippine Department of Energy, let me reiterate that we are committed to power up Filipino communities through clean, efficient, robust, and sustainable energy systems that will create wealth, propel industries, and transform the lives of Filipino men and women and generations to come. Thank you for your attention. May we all have positive energy throughout the day. Yes, thank you, Dr. Rowena. Excellent speech and presentation about the Philippines. Um, so, Dr. Rowena, could you answer some questions about uh, from the audience? Of course. Yes. Uh, the first one is the. Could you describe uh, more uh, what the steps are being undertaken by the government for the renewable energy sector? The steps. Yes. What are the steps? Um, like the fun financing sports or something, sports like that. Financing, to say that again, financing. Uh, financing sports, financing policy. Oh, okay. Uh, the bottom line is that we basically opened our renewable energy to 100% foreign ownership. Uh, this only happened last November. And in fact, the offer was so attractive that uh, two weeks ago, um, we received uh, intention from um, a Denmark company for 
five billion dollar investment in offshore wind. So by making the policies uh, more open to renewable energy, we're able to encourage investments from the private sector. Remember, in the Philippines, we are market driven. Uh, the government does not own uh, generation facilities. Okay, um, the second one is that we want to know so does any uh, offshore wind program will be included in the the auction uh, auction in the in the June? Ah, not not yet because based on our uh, conversations with the offshore wind developers, they will be ready to participate next year. So in the green energy auction in twenty twenty four, we will include offshore wind, but not this year yet. Okay, that's that's all good. Thank you, thank you again, Dr. Ruena. Thank you for the excellent speech. Okay, thank you.